Here at the Agora, we're allies, as you know, of the LGBTQ plus community, and we have always campaigned for a more inclusive fertility care policy, particularly when it comes to NHS funding. This is why I'm really excited to give you some news today about the changes that are going to be happening. So officially from the 1st of November this year, the Sussex Clinical Care Commissioning Groups have announced that they will start to fund treatments with donor sperm. So that is for people that need donor sperm treatment because their uh, male partner has a fertility issue, no sperm, which is called azospermia. But more importantly, same-sex couples and single women will now be able to access NHS-funded uh, donor sperm treatment. There are also other changes on the horizon, which I'm very pleased about. The current funding provision in Sussex is limited to two cycles of IVF treatment for women under 40 in a heterosexual relationship, and that's being increased to three fully funded cycles. And in addition to that, in line with the guidance which was published by the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, or NICE guidance, in 2013, women who are between the ages of 40 and 42 will be able to access one NHS funded IVF treatment cycle. And other, other good news is for uh, egg donation treatment. If you've been diagnosed with a premature menopause, which is a menopause under the age of 40, and that might be because that's just how your body clock has worked out for your ovaries, or you may have had your ovaries removed in surgery, or suffer from other conditions that require you to have donor eggs, you will also be able to access NHS funding. There are some limitations, however, to the policy, and I don't know all the detail. This was communicated to me um, just three weeks ago. I, I am aware that the changes are in place, and this is an you know this is an inclusive policy, which I am you know really pleased to, to be able to share with you. But I don't have all the details, so I don't know to what extent, uh, for example, in same-sex couples and single uh, women, you will have to have gone through a certain amount of privately funded treatment. Currently, the NICE guidance um, does advise that heterosexual couples can access fertility funding for IVF, for example, when they have been trying to conceive for two years and they can get investigations to find out why they're not conceiving if they've been having unprotected intercourse for uh, over a year. For same-sex couples, however, where donor sperm has to be purchased, they are currently stating that at least six cycles of self-insemination with donor sperm or insemination in the clinic have to have been conducted for them to qualify for fertility tests. So we've still got a lot of detail to work out. We also know that for same-sex uh, male couples, they are not going to have any, any help or any funding towards surrogacy treatment, which is a big, big disappointment to us as we, as we do look after so many, so many couples who need to go down the surrogacy pathway, which is very costly. So I'm really keen to, you know, to be able to get started. Um, very, the team here are really excited. Um, we do a lot of work with the LGBTQ plus community, as well as, um, as being the largest provider of, of, of NHS care here in Sussex for IVF treatment. But I'm, I'm also keen to, to listen to your views and to make sure that we can work really closely with the CCGs in Sussex to really work out the best pathways, to make sure everything is absolutely clear and to make sure people can actually access that treatment when they need it. I'm now going to turn to some of our, our partners and, and really get their comments and views on this exciting news. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Rose and I'm one of the founders of the global organisation, the LGBT Mummies Tribe, and we're also partners with the Agora Clinic in Brighton. As Carol from the Agora has stated, Sussex CCG Clinical Commissioning Group has decided to review and amend their fertility art policies in regards to supporting and giving access to fertility funding to more people, including the LGBT plus community. We think this is absolutely fantastic and we are so delighted that they're doing this. What we would like to see is in finer detail to review, understand and appreciate how people within the community are going to have access, who still needs access and how that's going to be supported going further. We really want to work with them on this and ensure improvement and equality for all. It's a great day. 
Here at Fertility Help Hub, we're delighted to hear the news that the NHS in Sussex are extending their funding to help support same-sex female couples with family building, those who need donor sperm due to male infertility, which my husband and I did, as he's infertile, and we now have children via donor sperm, and also solo mothers by choice who also need donor sperm. This is a fantastic step forward and we have so much further to go, but we're really happy to hear that this support is being extended and it's going to help so many more people in the Sussex area. Hi, I'm Michael Johnson Ellis, founder of Two Dads UK, The Modern Family Show and My Surrogacy Journey. Having campaigned several years for equitable fertility treatment, this is a huge win for the LGBTQ plus community and I'm absolutely Thrilled to see that Sussex CCG are trailblazing when it comes to equitable fertility treatment. However, though, having personally had to fund my three rounds of fertility treatment for gestational surrogacy, I once again am slightly disappointed by the fact that same-sex male people have been excluded from this latest news. But let's not forget this is still a monumental decision and one that I hope other clinical commissioning groups will follow. Congratulations Sussex, we're absolutely thrilled. Let's see what's in store for the same-sex male community. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, Mike, Laura Rose and Eloise for your helpful comments and um, I'd like to just finish by saying we are on a road here towards equality uh, in infertility care, but there is still some way to go. So keep the noise up, keep the conversation going, and let's see if we can get to you know, a perfect situation of diverse and inclusive fertility care for all.